Good evening to everyone. Hope everybody's had a wonderful afternoon. Appreciate you being here tonight. If you're visiting with us, you're an honored guest, and we welcome you back in any and every opportunity that you might have to be with us. Brother Kerry Dayton will be leading our song service tonight, number 103. If you'd like to go ahead and turn to that. I'll be doing the opening prayer. Uh, Brother Kerry Moody will be doing the closing prayer. A few announcements to go over. Uh, continue uh, mentioned this morning, last leader's registration money, uh, all the pre uh, convention events, uh, some of those awards, I've got to get those uh, put in the registration. So if you have not got those turned in to me, please get those uh, this week. I've got to get that finished up. <clears throat> On our prayer list, I mentioned this morning it was rather lengthy, and tonight it's a little bit longer, so bear with me. Uh, as we go through this, Brother Ron, of course, will be having open heart surgery on Tuesday. Uh, Tillman, Tillman Ivy uh, has cancer. Patty Crabb, uh, continue to member Robert Cashin. Mariana McGee. Uh, Eric Louisa, uh, this is the seventh grader from Belmont. Van Roberts, Danny Goza, Donnie Stevens. Uh, Cora Taylor uh, got to come home, uh, so uh, proud to hear that. Also continue to remember Shane Thorne. Uh, mentioned Noah Knight uh, this morning as well. Uh, he has completed most all of the surgeries uh, that he's had to have, and there's been several. Uh, the next step for this young man is a lot of rehab. I know uh, from different posts that's uh, been put on, uh, he's struggling with some anxiety uh, and some other issues that are going on, uh, and they're, uh, you know, just hoping that he's not going to be paralyzed. Uh, so uh, he's dealing with a lot right now, so that family right there would surely appreciate your prayers. Gail Strickland. Uh, also, uh, Trace Russell tested positive for COVID today, uh, so remember him. Lee also has the same symptoms but tested negative, and I think he'll retest again tomorrow. We mentioned uh, James Estes Sarton uh, tested positive for COVID. I uh, mentioned this morning as well, Larry Don Taylor uh, was carried to Dothan, Alabama, to the hospital there. Uh, he has COVID, and he has been put on the ventilator. Uh, and then I also mentioned his wife, Jenny, had traveled down to see him, and uh, she had a heart attack while she was there, so she is now in the hospital there. Uh, Carly Tedford, uh, most of y'all are aware of her situation as well. She's been on the prayer list for some time. Uh, but there's so many families uh, on this list uh, that uh, need your prayers. And then also there's opportunities there if you want to help some of these uh, folks as well. I'm sure they would truly, truly appreciate all that you could do for them. Also had a text that had came from Becky Adams, and uh, she asked if we would read this. It said, Dear Church Family, I cannot tell you how much I've missed uh, not being able to worship with you in person. We are needing your prayers again. I will be having surgery on Tuesday in Tupelo. Uh, it will be hard on Charles and my family with me not being able to take care of Charles after the surgery. Please pray for them as well as me. Thanks for all the prayers said on our behalf in the past. And also a special thank you to the Joy Class and all the ladies uh, that have done for us in the past. Love to all. This is from Becky Adams. So uh, continue to remember her, and we'll add her to that list as well. Uh, on a positive note, uh, and I neglected to mention this morning, this totally slipped my mind. You wouldn't, I ne you normally wouldn't happen with all this on this notebook. But anyway, uh, Hunter Jackson was baptized Wednesday night after services. Uh, if some of you might not have been aware of that, uh, so when you get the opportunity, maybe uh, sometime here in the next week or so, uh, congratulate him and encourage him as well. That's all the announcements I have. Uh, we'll begin our services with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings that you've truly blessed us with. 
Father, you meet our needs each and every day. You've, you've blessed us with so much, with our homes and our family and our friends and our church. Father, we're just so truly grateful. We give you the glory for all of these good things that you've given to us. Father, we're also grateful for your son, Jesus. We're grateful that we have the opportunity to ask you for forgiveness. We have the opportunity each and every day to petition you in prayer. Father, we're grateful for what Jesus done for us. The lessons that he shared with us. The lessons, Father, that we can live out in our lives each and every day. Father, we're grateful that he went to the cross where we can have those forgiveness of sins. Father, we pray each and every day that we'll spend some time in your word and we'll remember the great sacrifice that was made for each and every one of us. Father, we're grateful for our country that we live in, for the freedoms that we have to worship you. Father, we pray for our government tonight. We pray that those who are involved in all the decision-making that are made will always continually look to your word and, Father, put you first in all the decisions that are made. Father, we truly thank you for all the prayers that you've answered on so many that was mentioned here on our list tonight, so many who's got to come home, so many who's uh, steadily improved each and every day that's had surgeries, that's had different things happen. And, Father, we, we know uh, that, that those families are truly grateful for what you've done for them. But, Father, also we continue to ask you uh, in a special way this, this upcoming week to be with those who will be having surgery. We pray that you'll be with all the doctors that are tending to them. We pray that you'll bless Brother Ron. We pray, pray that you'll be with Sister Becky. And Father, we also ask that you bless Brother Van Roberts uh, as he continues his treatments. Father, we pray that you'll be with all of those who are tending to them, all of those who... Father, our family who may be traveling with them, staying with them each and every day. Father, we pray that you'll bless them. We pray that you'll give them a speedy recovery, that they'll be back to their normal walks of life very quickly. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we're grateful for all those who are willing to speak your word and teach your word. We're, we're thankful for Brother David. For all those who labor in your work, for all the missionaries that we support here at Liberty, we, we pray, Father, that you would bless them. Father, we know that their work carries them away from home. And, Father, we pray that you'll bless them in their travels, wherever they may be. And we pray, Father, that your word would continue to grow, not only in our congregation, in our county, but in, in, in throughout the world, Father. We pray that you'll continue to help us to encourage others each and every day. And Father, as we find those opportunities to do good, we pray, Father, that we'll have a willingness to do so. Father, we pray as we go through the remainder part of this worship service tonight that each and everything that we do will be done in accordance with your will. And Father, we truly pray that your will will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 103. 103. Let me find it. <clears throat> I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray. In the vineyard of the Lord, 
I want to be a worker strong and brave. I want to trust in Jesus' power to save. All who will truly come shall find a happy home in the kingdom of the Lord. I will work, I will pray <clears throat> in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will Two hundred seventy six. Two hundred seventy six. <clears throat> Sing the first and last verse. O land of rest for thee, I sigh, when will the moment come when I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home? Will My Savior's side no more My steps I roam With Him I'll brave death's chilling tide And reach my heavenly home Will work till Jesus comes with Till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. <clears throat> if you would this time, Mark number 261. 261. They are a song of encouragement. <clears throat> While you're there, we'll sing before David brings us a lesson, number 262, 262. If it's convenient for you, please stand. <clears throat> Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the day is sparkling. Work mid the springling flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming when man's work is done. Work for the night is coming under the sunset sky while their bright curtains are glowing work for the daylight flies <clears throat> work till the last beam to shine no more, work for the night is darkening, when 
Good evening. It's wonderful to be together to worship God and to sing these songs of praise. And I appreciate Carrie leading these songs and work. That's what our lesson's entitled tonight, Work. I really appreciate liberty with the uh, serious desire to work. Think about that. You guys accomplish so very much, even in this time of a pandemic. For the last two years, uh, we have still accomplished a great deal, uh, whether it be through the Internet or whatever, but also our hands reach out because we've got missionaries out there that are working because of what we do. As a matter of fact, year before last, we were able to to support some missionaries, and then the last year we, we even supported them in a greater way, and then this past year, this past time, we just got an announcement last week or so about how we supported them even greater, and, and that's your work. That is what you are accomplishing, what we are accomplishing. We may not be able to physically put our hands on it, but when we send people out there, it makes a great deal of difference. When we have Wayne Barrier to come and tell us what all he's accomplishing because of our, these men and women would not be able to do what they're doing if it wasn't for our work. You guys are working and we want to be a worker. That's what that song said. You just sang the song, I want to be a worker for the Lord and, and I will work. That's what uh, we just sang. You know, I'll work, work, work for the night is coming. We won't be able to work anymore, so let's get the job done. The elders just had a meeting on a phone with Randy English. You remember him from out in Samoan Islands and uh, uh, the Pacific Islands. He hasn't been able to go back because of COVID, but God put him in a particular place at a particular time because before COVID hit, he had come and asked the elders here, "Could you reckon the congregation can help us with, with some fire tablets? some tablets that we can give out to strategic people over there in the Pacific Islands. And you thought, well, okay, that'd be nice for them to have. They could have a copy of the Bible, but they could also have, uh, just like a tablet would do, it have all kinds of things and access to the Internet and every kind of thing that they can have. With just this, uh, You reckon Liberty can do that? And the elder said, sure, Liberty would love to participate in that work. And so he got several hundred of them out there out there in the hands of these people. And little did he know, little did we know, COVID would hit. And when COVID hit, they shut those islands down. They did a lot different than all the world. They closed their borders. You couldn't come into those islands. And they didn't have a COVID case for a long period of time. Of course, that's changing now since they're opening up a little bit. But for a long period of time, because they shut it down. There was nobody able to go in there to do anything, much less carry the gospel to them. And Randy himself and his wife, they got shut out. But guess what? They were able to continue to work with those people right along because of the fire tablets that we put in their hands. Amen? Amen. They were able to access everything that Randy was doing and was putting it out there through that radio broadcast that we're supporting. And they're getting the word out there. And they never missed a beat. Now, there's nothing like face-to-face. -face. Amen to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit tired of just the Internet and having worship service across the Internet. It just doesn't, it just, it's just not the same. It's not what God designed. But you do what you can do. And what Liberty does, and what I really appreciate about Liberty, is you work. You know that it's got to be done. And God made us to work. God's nature is that He's a worker. He created everything. And we're made in the image of God, so it's our nature to work. And God is very, very, very much involved in our work. Whatever we put our hands to do, we're going to do it with all of our might, to whatever capability we have. And God's a part of that. God's in that, in every aspect. He offers us a reward. He said, now, everything will work out if you'll just do what I say. But he's got his hands involved in it as well. All the way back at the beginning of time, when he made Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 15, 
Here's what the Bible says. The Lord God took the man, that's Adam. He put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. In other words, to work. He made the man to work. And he didn't just put him in the garden of Eden and back off. He gave him guidelines. He gave him choices. But he said, this is what I want you to do. Get out there and work. And verse number 16 of Genesis chapter 2 says this. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So God is saying, I'm, I'm watching your work. I'm involved in your work. And I'm giving you choices about your work. I'm going to hold you accountable for your work. God is very much involved in my work. He's very much involved in your work. In our work individually and in our work collectively. What we're doing here at Liberty. He's very much involved. He is taking account of it. He's watching it. And we get to be a part of that. Now, he's a part of it. But we get to make choices. And we get to enhance our work. So how do we get so much done? Think about it. For the last two, two and a half years, uh, we haven't been able to physically get out and do a whole lot. But we have. We've, we've circumvented that. We've done a whole lot in the last couple of years. How did we do that? Now, of course, we're going to give God credit. Because God is very much involved in our work. But we are involved. We've got to make some decisions. And here's how we did it. Number one, if you're taking notes, we're going to give you some P words. So write it down. The, every word that we're going to have on here is going to start with the letter P. And the first thing we had to do is prepare. Whenever we go about our work, whatever that work is, whatever God has given you and I or individually or collectively to do, the first thing we have to do is prepare for it. We can't go do work without preparing to get the job done. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Now, Paul is in prison. He's going to die in a couple of months. And he's writing this letter to Timothy. And he's encouraging Timothy to do the work. I'm going to die. I need you to keep on doing the work. But he says, you need to purge yourself from these. Well, what is the these? The these in the previous verse. The previous verse says that there are some dishonorable vessels out there. There's some gold, silver, and all this, but there's also some dishonorable things. You need to purge yourself. Get rid of these dishonorable vessels. Get rid of all of that. If you do that, then you will be a vessel unto honor. Get rid of the dishonorable vessels, and you'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet. That word meet means suitable. You know, God made Eve to be a help meet for Adam, a helper that's suitable for Adam. So if you will purge yourself from the dishonorable things, then you will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart, and suitable for the master's use. And, listen to this, prepared. Prepared unto every good work. So if we will participate in our life to purge ourselves from dishonorable things and allow God to set us apart, allow God to sanctify us and help us to be meet or suitable, then we are preparing ourselves for whatever work God... We had no idea that COVID was coming. But because of the opportunity to put that fire tablet in those people's hands, we were prepared. We didn't know it, but we did it. We were prepared. You did it. We all did it together. We were prepared unto every good work that comes our way. But bear this in mind. When we prepare, God's involved. Whatever you're doing in your life, in your spiritual life, God is very much involved in it. Listen to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. 
Beginning at verse number 20. Now the God of peace that brought him again from the dead, our Lord Jesus. Of course, we're talking about God, the Father, who raised up Jesus from the dead. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. We're talking about our heavenly Father, God. Well, what about him? Look at verse 21. Make you perfect in every good work. We just talked about being prepared for every good work. Well, God makes us perfect in every good work. And that word perfect is not perfect in the sense we don't make mistakes. It means complete. God, if, if I'm prepared to do some good work, bear in mind that God is behind that. He is involved in that. God is going to make that complete under every good work. What? To do his will to do what God wants us to do. Now listen to this listen to this phrase right here. He says, "Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you." Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. When I prepare myself unto every good work, then God is involved in that. He makes that complete according to His will. As long as I'm working to perform His will, as long as I'm doing what He wants me to do, God will work in that. And He is working in you, working in me to accomplish that. You see, when we do our work, we think it's all about us. It's just not. God's involved in that. We got to prepare We've got to be ready to do the good work, but understand that God's involved. But we also have to do the work. It's one thing about preparing to do the work, but we actually got to get out there and perform it. We got to go do it. Jesus tells a parable in Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. And in this parable, he said, A certain man had two sons. And he went to the first son and he said, I need you to go work in my vineyard. Go get that done. And that first son says, I will not. I'm not going. I'm not going to perform the work that you asked me to do. Well, then he went to the second son and he said, Son, go work in my vineyard. And the second son said, I go. I go, sir. I'll go get in that field, I'll go get in that vineyard and go to work. But the problem is that the first son said, you know, I told him I wouldn't go, but I'm going to. He went on out there and worked in the field. The second son, even though he said, I'm going, he did not go. And Jesus asked the question, which one of these two boys, the first or the second, did the will of the Father. Of course, everybody said the first because he actually performed it. There's a lot of folks out there that says, I will do something, and they prepare for doing something, and they prepare and prepare and prepare and say and say and say and talk about and talk about and talk about, but they never perform it. Jesus said the one that actually does the will of God is the one that goes does it that performs the work. And you say, well, that's a hard thing to do. And it may be. It may be, it may be quite difficult to go out there and actually do it, especially in difficult circumstances. But folks, we're not alone. God is in this also. Just like He is in the preparation part of it, He's also in the performing part of it. Listen to Philippians Chapter number 1, verse 6. Go there in your Bible. Read it for yourself. Philippians chapter 1. And you're going to go down to verse 6. Paul is in prison. Again, now this is, he's not in the deep dark dungeon like he was when he wrote 2 Timothy. It's earlier imprisonment. and He's under house arrest. The Philippians has sent him a great gift to help him in his time of need. And he's writing this thank you letter to the Philippians and thanking them for everything. 
and he's really bragging on them for the work that they're doing. And here's what he said in the very first chapter, six verses down, verse number six, being confident, Paul said, I'm confident of this very thing, what? That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Not only is God very much involved in our preparation to do the work, He is part of the performance of the work. He begun the work in us, and He can perform it. It's not all about us getting it all done. It's us doing what is put before us. There it is. Now, I'm going to put my hands on it. I'm going to prepare to do it. It's the will of God. It's the right thing to do. So I'm going to go forward with it. And we're going to trust God to be involved in that because He is. He will perform it. And one day, we will present this work. You know, if you were working for a, an employer or a customer, if you're in business for yourself and you're doing a service for this customer, maybe you're building something for them or, or performing something for them, you prepared to do it and you perform the work, and now you call your customer in, you call your boss in, and you say, here we go, I'm presenting this to you. This is my work. I prepared to do it, I performed it, here it is. I'm giving it to you. And that's what we do. We are Christians in the kingdom of God. I will work, I will work. I want to be a worker, we sang. And so, we're going to present this work. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse number 11, we are going to present our work. And not everybody's work is going to be the same. It's going to be different. But here's what he said. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul said the foundation is Jesus Christ. And there is no other foundation. But we're going to build on that. That's what he's talking about. Paul and Apollos and, and Cephas and all these folks. We're going to build on the foundation. No other foundation can be laid but Jesus. But we come in to the foundation of Christ and we build on that. We are, we are working in the kingdom. We're working to build the church, right? But look at verse number 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, Precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. One of these days, we're going to present our work, and we're going to say, here you go, God, we're presenting our work. Some of us are going to be presenting gold, some silver, some hay, and wood, and stubble. It's just what we do. We're, we're going to present it to God. But we're not in it alone. Somebody says, well, I'm going to go before God with my work. And a lot of people want to take their work and say, I'm so good, and I've got such a great goal because I go to church every Sunday. I give a whole bunch more money than anybody else, and, and I go visit all the sick people, and I'm just a worker. I'm a worker. And look at all this gold that I can present to God. Somebody else says, well, all I've got is just a little bit of work, a cup of cold water. And I sure don't want to go up there with you when you've got all this gold to present, and I've just got this little bit to present. Folks, if we're doing that, we're doing it based upon our own merit. When we go before God, we're not in it alone. Just like God is with us when we prepare, just like He's part of our performance, He's part of the presentation process too. Listen to first, or rather Jude. This is the one book of Jude, one chapter, verse number 24. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Christ is going to be there 
with me, with whatever I'm presenting in my work, he's going to be right there to present me faultless. There's going to be no fault in me, no fault in you. Now, are we sinners? Yes. All have sinned. All come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. But when it comes to presenting our work, then he's going to be right there with us. He was there to prepare us. He was there in the performance of it, and he's going to be there in the presentation of it. Amen? It's a wonderful thought to have. So when we go out and say, oh, my work, I just, I just don't have a good work. I, 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 yes, you do. Just get out there and prepare it. God will take care of helping you. Get out there and perform it. God will take care of helping you. And then when the day comes to present it, God will be right there. Jesus will be right there. He's all part of it. And it's all productive. It's all going to be great. It's all going to produce positive things. Because God's watching. Just like in the Garden of Eden when he put Adam there. He said, you do the work. And I'll watch over you. I'll be a part of it. I'll, I'll hold you accountable. And he did. Adam made the mistake. But he was right there and involved. Listen to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Hebrews 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous. That means he is righteous. But he's not unrighteous to forget your work. Well, I've done this and I've done that. Yes, you have. And it would be wrong for God to forget it. But God is not unrighteous. He's not wrong. He is right. He will not forget your work and your labor of love, which you have showed toward His name, in that you minister to the saints and do minister. You folks here at the Liberty Church of Christ, we are ministering to the saints. We're doing what we can do. Even in this difficult time of the pandemic and surgeries and deaths, we've had so many. And even during this time, we ministered in the past and we do minister. We are doing the work and God is watching. God is involved. He's preparing us. He's performing it. He's going to present it and there's going to be a reward because He's watching. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much, why should we do this? Why should we be steadfast? Why should we be unmovable? Why should we always be abounding in the work of the Lord? Here's why. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God's watching. It's productive. You're getting the job done. It's not in vain. And one of these days, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 says this, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. My reward's with me. What are you going to do with that reward, Jesus? To give every man according as his work shall be. So as we prepare our work, and we perform our work, and we present our work, know this, and know it well, that our work is not in vain. Our work is going to produce. It's not that we earn it. He's got his reward. A reward is something that he's going to, to bless us with. He's going to be all part of it. But we've got to do it, and do it before the night's over. You know, in John chapter number 9, verses 1 through 5, Jesus was walking past a blind man. And he looked at this blind guy, and this blind guy had been blind since his birth. He had never saw. The day he was born, he was blind. And they had a belief system back then that if you're blind or deaf or you have some sort of a problem in life, it's because you're a sinner and God's punishing you for that sin. So 
the disciples came to Jesus and said, we got a question about this blind guy that's been blind since birth. Is he a sinner? Or is his parents a sinner? And God punished his parents with a blind child. So is the blind guy the sinner or is the parents the sinner? And Jesus said, no, neither one of them has nothing to do with the sins of that man or his parents. But I tell you what, this blind guy, been blind since birth, is here today for one reason. And that's that I can share with you the light of the world. Jesus said he is the light of the world. He says, as long as I am in the world, I'm the light of the world. So this is just giving me an opportunity to, to make this blind man see. And he did. And everybody was amazed because nobody had done that. Uh, nobody had made a blind man see that's been blind since his birth. And no miracle like that has ever happened. And Jesus did it. And he said, I want to tell you something. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh. The time is running out. The night cometh when no man can work. So, verse number 5 of John 9 says this, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus himself understood that he had a limited period of time to do what he did on planet earth. But he turned to his disciples and he said, You go into all the world. You preach the gospel. You go out there and be the light of the world. And that's where we are today. We are working as best as we can. But we must realize the night is coming. When no man can work. The time is running out. And as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. It doesn't matter if all you can do is give a cup of cold water to someone to help them along their way. That's light. It doesn't matter if you baptize 3,000 people in the middle of Africa or on the Pacific Islands. That's great. But whatever it is that God has given us to do, He will be a part of it in preparation, in performance. He'll be a part of it in presentation. And He'll certainly be a part of it when we receive our reward. Are you a Christian tonight? Are you part of that? Don't you want to be a part of that? It's time to be. If you've never been baptized for the remission of your sins, follow God's plan of salvation and get to work. You're not on your own. We're here, but God is part of it too. Why don't you come? Why together we stand and sing. When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright.
It's great to be worshiping together tonight with a bunch of workers, people who love to do what God has called you to do, and you're out there doing it. Whatever it is that you're doing, just know this, God is part of it, and we're going to receive our reward. It's not in vain. It is productive. So, be back with us on Wednesday night. We'll be studying together, and uh, we'll be encouraging one another, uplifting one another, and uh, knowing more about God's Word, and we'll be about the work. Be in prayer for those that's going to have surgeries, as uh, Brother Jimmy's already prayed. Collectively, we prayed for Ron and Becky and others, so keep, continue to remember them in prayer. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to take the Lord's Supper, then uh, right after we dismiss, just make your way to this room here to my left, and you will be served. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity, dear Lord, to have come here this day to worship you, to give you praise and glory. Lord, to give you honor for being the God that you are. We're so thankful that you love us. We're so thankful that, that you have chosen us, dear Lord, to serve you. And we pray, dear Lord, that as we walk on this earth, that we will work for you and give you the glory. Lord, we realize that we're sinners and we're so thankful for the blood that Jesus has has shed on Calvary that may give us hope of salvation. We continue to pray for this church, dear Lord, and we lift the elders up to you that you may bless them and give them wisdom, dear Lord, to lead this congregation. And we pray, dear Lord, for those that uh, are sick and those that are having surgeries and those that are fighting cancer and disease, that you will bless them this week. We pray that we will seek opportunities, dear Lord, to help others. Lord, so thankful for all the many blessings you give us, and we pray that as we go about our week this week, that we will meditate upon your word, that we will pray and study and draw ourselves close to you through your word. We love you and give you the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.